Good morning. The psalmist proclaims that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have gathered here this morning to rejoice and be glad in this day. Welcome. It is a joy to be here with you this morning, and uh, certainly a joy to uh, see the sunlight creeping through the uh, beautiful stained glass windows this morning as a uh, lover of the sun. Uh, it, it's always a joy this time of year to see that. We gather here this morning on uh, the Baptism of the Lord Sunday. We've gone rather quickly through the life of Jesus, uh, through his birth and the visit of the wise men, and now, boom, he's 30 years old. My, they grow up quickly. <laughs> but we're celebrating uh, his, his baptism uh, today and remembering our own as well. There are uh, several announcements in the bulletin that I would uh, like to call to your attention. Uh, the first is that our Zoom group uh, is restarting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. and uh, I think I got the last of the books in. Uh, I ordered them two months ago and uh, they sent a whole bunch at first and then they started sending them individually because they ran out. Uh, so I think I've got four more books left and uh, those are in the fellowship hall. Uh, we're starting this new study, Prayer and Worship, and uh, if you are interested in joining us, we'd love to have you. If you have not joined us in the past, uh, I think any of the people who are involved in this would give a glowing report. Uh, we do have a good time. The readings are, uh, are relatively short and it brings out a lot of good uh, discussion. And so we start at 10 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning on Zoom and uh, live in person uh, in the ALC. Also, a uh, reminder to uh, the ladies of Martha Circle that you are beginning uh, your st are continuing your study, uh, but at a new time and a new place. You'll be meeting tomorrow uh, back here in the library. We'll have a couple of tables set up here at, at uh, 2.30 in the library in the back of the sanctuary. So uh, just a reminder to the ladies, if you show up at 6.30, you will have missed it. Uh, 2.30 tomorrow. Also, uh, Joy Group on Tuesday and uh, deacons meet this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Let us pray. <clears throat> Glorious God, as Jesus prayed at his baptism, your spirit descended upon him providing sustenance and strength. And so, O oh God, may your Spirit descend upon us as we offer our prayers for your church and for the world. <clears throat> we pray, O oh God, for your church. May your word spark our lives with truth and joy as we serve one another, stranger and friend alike, to the glory of your holy name. We pray for all leaders and people around the globe. May your justice provoke us to shape a peaceful world where all work for the common good. We pray for the well-being of your creation. May your goodness startle us to the horror of our exploitation and abuse of creation. And may your Spirit guide us to heal and renew this good earth. We pray for all who suffer in grief, or in sickness of any kind. May your tender mercy 
abide with us and with them and hasten our healing. We pray for all who lack the essentials of life. May your righteousness raise us up to walk together with respect and dignity for all. We pray for all first responders and healthcare workers who put their lives on the line each and every day, who are working long and arduous hours, who are severely understaffed, and weary from this long, drawn-out illness. Watch over and protect them, O God. Keep them safe and healthy, and encourage them as they do their work each and every day. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have gone before us, May your steadfast love shelter them in the peace of your eternal light. O God, you have made us, formed us, and called us by name, and you have redeemed us in Christ. Receive our prayers this day, for your life-giving Spirit is powerful to save. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Glorious God, when Jesus was baptized for your healing mission, the heavens opened in a flash of glory as vision and voice blazed upon the water. May your Spirit so burn in us that we hear your word translated into deed and follow Jesus in paths of justice, right relationship, and peace. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, For I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. 
I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Then a reading from Luke chapter 3, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. And just so that you don't think that I'm intentionally skipping important stuff here, the, uh, the lectionary um, uh, has chosen to leave out a couple of verses because it goes into biographical information on John the Baptist uh, and his life. Uh, and take, uh, So we're following the, baptism, the story of the baptism of Jesus. Beginning in chapter 3 of Luke, verse 15. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I was listening to a friend just a couple of days ago, nobody you know, tell me a story about their father. And as I was listening to the story that they were telling me about their father, I was realizing just how lucky and blessed I was. You all, most everybody here, had the opportunity to know my dad. He was by no means perfect. He was human, just like all of us. He made mistakes and said things he shouldn't have said and did things he shouldn't have done. But reflecting back on his life and listening to my friend tell their story, I realized how blessed and fortunate I was to have my dad in my life. For this friend's story broke my heart. Just as any child, this friend was trouble. I've never met a child that didn't cause trouble for their parent. Maybe even the occasional heartbreak and grief and certainly sleep, sleepless nights. That's kind of the job description of children. That's what they do. 
And the job description of a parent is to suffer because of it. Oh, there's many blessings and good things about being a parent. But there are certainly seasons in which you have to remind yourself of those good things that seem so few and far between. So this friend had caused some trouble for their father. And their father took it deeply personally and was quite angry for a long time. A guest comes over to visit. And my friend, as a small child, is telling me this story that as a small child, they came out from the other room and as a guest often does, they says, they ask to the, to the father, well, who is this? To which the father replies, that's no one. Ignore them. Get out of here. He says to his own child. Experiences like that cause a lifetime of pain and struggle that follows people every day. It got me to thinking as a parent of my own shortcomings and the things that I said that I wished I could take back, the things that I did that I wished I could have undone. My only hope and prayer is that I didn't scar my children nearly as badly as that particular father. I can't even begin to imagine the rejection and the pain. Not even to claim your own child. To wave them off and say they are simply no one and to reject them and drive them away. Heartbreaking. And let me tell you, the relationship did not improve after that for a long time. I was listening to this story. My friend was telling me and thinking about my own dad, and thinking about our Heavenly Father, and certainly thinking about my sermon this morning, and realizing that God is just the opposite of that Father who is cruel and rejecting. Our Heavenly Father is loving, and accepting. That's what this whole story of the baptism of Jesus is about. We've gone from manger to the waters of the Jordan River in no time flat because we're getting to the real important part of the story. You see, the life of Jesus isn't about the manger. It's about what happens at the Jordan River and after. And the Jordan River is the starting line for the great race of Jesus' life. And here at the beginning of this race, is this interaction between a father and a son. And before everyone, in the sight of everyone, God claims, this is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Think about that as a positive affirmation. My own therapist and my 
uh, therapist friend, Dr. Rogers, we often talk about the tapes that we play in our head. And those tapes that we play are often voices of our own or voices of others who have been either critical or loving. Though I don't know about you, I tend to play the critical tapes much more often than the loving ones. And we pull out those old tapes and we listen to them again and again. Especially in times of trial and stress. Imagine for Jesus as He's beginning the most trying part of His life, His public ministry, imagine having the tape played from God the Father Himself. (laughs) You are My Son, the Beloved. In You I am well pleased. How do you think Jesus is going to feel about Himself? If I was in Jesus' shoes, my response to every day and every moment would be, yes, I can do this. Whatever this is, bring it on. Because whatever comes my way is nothing compared to my Father who loves me and claims me as a beloved son. In fact, if you had that kind of positive affirmation from your Heavenly Father, you might believe that you could do anything. Jesus did. He believed it. And He did it. He healed the sick, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind. And then get this. He tells His disciples that soon He's going to be going to the Father and because He's going, God is going to send His Spirit and you are going to do greater things than these. (laughs) Greater things than giving sight to the blind and raising the dead and healing the sick. It sometimes feels unbelievable. But it's amazing what you can do when God is on your side. It's amazing what you can do when God Himself believes in you. And you play that tape over and over and over again. The challenge for us is what tapes do we play? Do we play the tape of the world that says this is no one? They mean nothing. Go away. Or do we play God's tape? You see, something happens in Jesus' baptism more than just God's claim on His life. But baptism itself grows and changes from what John was doing when it happens with Jesus. You see, John was calling people to the rivers of, to the Jordan River and asking them to repent of their sin, to change their lives, and to be renewed and refreshed. And here comes Jesus who has nothing to repent of and gets this baptism anyway. And the repentance becomes very quickly overshadowed by the voice of God claiming 
Jesus as God's own Son. Baptism takes on such a greater meaning. For in God's eyes, it's not about the wrong we have done. It's about how much God loves us in spite of the wrong we have done. To our Heavenly Father, the things that we do or say that we wish we could undo or unsay, those are nothing compared to how much God loves you. And so baptism becomes, after Jesus, less of a focus on me and more of a focus on God's power and God's love. And then something as crazy as saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, doesn't sound quite so crazy anymore. Because if we are playing God's baptismal tape in our mind, if we are listening to God claim us as God's beloved sons and daughters, and being reminded again and again that God is pleased with us, then we truly can do anything. I love how the lectionary combines the baptism of Jesus with Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43 is in many ways an extended love letter from God to God's people. This is addressed to Jacob, to Israel, to God's chosen people. And I want you to think about this as we are dealing with this pandemic that just doesn't seem to go away. Think about this as we are dealing with our own personal struggles, our own pains, with declining health, whatever it is that might be troubling us. Listen to what God has to say to you. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you, for I am the Lord your God. I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to take this insert this week, highlight it, and post it up next to my bed, maybe right over my alarm clock. I don't like that thing anyway. So that I'm reminded every day that no matter how hot the fire is or how loud the winds are or how high the rains may go, that I have nothing to be afraid of. Because we are loved by God. Indeed, I think we can face anything. Can't we? We can face anything with confidence. Even our own death Forbid it come to that. We can face that with confidence and faith, knowing that God is with us, just as Jesus did, as He willingly went to His own death. I can't help but think that maybe Jesus was, as He was hanging on that cross, 
in the depth of the pain that he was experiencing, both physical and spiritual, yes, he cried out asking why God has forsaken him. But I wonder if he heard that tape again. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith which comes from Romans chapter 8, selected verses, and is a reminder to us still that nothing can separate us from God's love. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to God's purpose, we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, as God claims us in the waters of baptism, so God feeds us and nourishes us for daily life through the bread and through the cup. And so as we prepare to come to this table, this foretaste of that great heavenly table, We come to God in thanksgiving and in prayer. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good. You made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us. And even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. Thank you, O God, for sending us your Son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, We break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
<clears throat> Hear the word of the Lord, O people of God. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you, for I am the Lord your God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with all of us, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen.